community. Um, what I, I would recommend is, as far as, because it's obviously some type of, uh, it's going to be a survey that would have to be answered. Um, I would actually recommend, um, there's a citizen, Jim DeMesis, who has a company that um, um, specializes in these type of surveys, um, which might be also a good resource, by the way, for the other survey that we were talking about previously mm -hmm. in setting goals, but that might be able to at least get us started. I don't know cost or value, but um, it's something to at least get him engaged and maybe get some expertise. Yeah, I can tell you that. the planning department and the senior advisory committee has been talking about um, age-friendly community. Yep. It's a mm -hmm. program that <coughs> may be a bit broader than what you're talking about, but it's the same concept. Right. I, I know um, Yarmouth and Cumberland, or maybe their combined communities, have started their process and they've started yeah. off with this survey approach of determining what type of services the communities really want. I'll talk to uh, the senior advisor group. I believe yeah. much of that is in process. I would also say too that, um, and this is very preliminary, but one of the school board members had reached out to me and um, had a, what I thought was a really great idea of really trying to, before next year and before referendum and all our budget and final numbers, and really trying to figure out who some of these um, elderly, some of our elderly population are that really are struggling with their taxes and what mm -hmm. we can be doing to help assist them um, a little bit better because we are, we are failing them in a lot of areas. So I think that might piggyback a little bit mm -hmm. on there. So just something that they had suggested that. And I think that scientifically <coughs> it helps structure the questions so that it also yeah. helps set those goals because it should help us identify what our priorities should be in that goal setting process. Communications is a big one. Um, I'll take the blame if there is something to go around. Okay. Things have slowed down. Just I've been distracted with budget, and we need to get that. Councilor St. Clair is heading up that effort, and, um, and and I guess I'll accept the responsibility of slowing the process down, partially because I think we need some basic policy or guidelines um, in terms of how this is going to operate. And um, I will soon have some time to get back on it. And, and we'll redouble our efforts. But it is uh, certainly a large goal of mine as well as Sherry to make some progress. Yeah, we definitely have, um, you know, we have some, some some domains and some some names and some sites that are really ready for us that we've already taken kind of sort of yeah. taking control of yeah, so that good. no one else can take control of them, yeah. um, which scarily can happen. Um, and people can start posting as you. Um, and so uh, that, I think, is, something that, you know, once we really dove into it, we didn't realize, you know, some of the ramifications that can come out of all of that. So that's, it's, it's taking us a little bit longer um, to iron out some of those details. And uh, real quickly, I think we're going to maintain, a lot of the police department and fire department maintain their own Facebook page. Yeah. They have their own niche, if you will, and, and yeah. people that follow that. Um, and we're going to roll up public works and community service into a town yeah. certainly supplement it further from that, but we'll have content uh, because those two exist already. Right. And I think they were pretty much like, here, take it and right. go ahead and run with it. So yeah. it was nice. All right, so real quick, we're just going to wrap up with our last two, um, affordable workforce housing. Um, as you know, um, Southgate House is in motion, mm -hmm. and um, Griffin Road is still waiting patiently. Um, they have been working on some language that will be coming to the council just for some clarification on, on housing um, pertaining to uh, deed restrictions and, and how you maintain affordability if you choose to go that way. Um, and then the last quick, quick little one is historic preservation. Um, as you know, we implemented, uh, or we should be implementing tonight, the implementation committee for historic preservation um, so that they can start working on implementing the report. So, um, Anything else real yeah. quick? Tom, I, I just wanted to ask, um, because it's been a couple of years, and I know Peter is new. I know that um, with the uh, workforce housing initiative, particularly with Southgate, that there may be some future, if not already, considerations for SIFs mm -hmm. related to that type of residential yeah. property. Can you provide us, at least maybe the two of us or anybody else that needs it, with some background on sure. that so like, we can get up to speed? I know it's going to be a conversation coming forward. Because one of the things that um, I definitely heard was that during the budget process is that we need to um, maximize uh, the revenue sources that support our budgets. And so when you give TIFs, you're not maximizing. You're giving that uh, tax back to the developer. So 
Um, I think that if we can get some information, it will help me sir, when that issue comes up, if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah, and these little parts and bits are different. Yeah, they're very different. Yeah. Being, oh, yeah. yeah. Really an essential part uh, of yeah. a way we can help and enable these projects. Right. But it's a good please question. Please. Make sure it's answered. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so um, we're just going to give five minutes to re reconnect and reset change up. Yeah. And, um, yeah.